Okay, I want to talk about the title race now. I want to start with the preview of Arsenal against Liverpool. Before that, we're going to get a full screen. We're going to get a graphic showing the odds, thanks to ESPN Bet, of the title. You can get two to one on Liverpool. Man City are one to two right now. Arsenal, 19 to two. Spurs, 33 to one. Rob, any value there? I'm surprised that that Arsenal are, are, are such a distant third in that, um, probably. I mean, I, I think it's fair enough that City are favourites. We're, we're basing that on the fact that everyone's back and that they've done it before and we're in that yeah. period of a season where they just go on these long runs and blitz everyone. I mean, I'd, obviously there is a difference in the table between Liverpool and Arsenal. I think it's about five points, is it? Um, but I don't see a massive difference in their ability to go and win the title from here, I mean, if, if I was putting money on, um, there's probably no value in, in putting money on City. I, I would suggest it's it's with Arsenal. Obviously, that would depend on them coming out of this little bit of dip of form and, and putting a, a longish run together. Um, obviously, I mean, Liverpool, maybe that's short because they are, at the moment, top of the table. Mm. Janusz, they could go eight points clear of Arsenal with a win in North London on Sunday. And they've actually won four of their last five to the Emirates by either 2-0 or, or 3-0. Yeah, it's Arsenal the favourites on Sunday. What do you make of all that? Who are your favourites and what do you think? Uh, I think Liverpool. Uh, you know, I'll go even further. I mean, you know, none of the results are going to make a difference. Even if Liverpool were to lose, I mean, OK, the difference is not going to be as big, but I think you're going to have a nice race between Liverpool, Manchester City, and perhaps even Arsenal, right, if, if Arsenal were to beat Liverpool. Uh, but I think, you know, it's all set up nicely because psychology is massive. Nobody expected Liverpool here. I go as far as to say that if Liverpool beat Arsenal in this game, I, I, I think they going to see it through because the value and everything that's happening about Liverpool and how they played, how they dismissed Chelsea, how their young players are coming in, where you we're talking, we're we're in an environment that we're talking about Trent Alexander Arnold possibly sitting on the bench. If not, you know, maybe he'll be using the midfield, and obviously that's going to be another uh, a bonus as well. But I think with everything that's going on and 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 Jurgen Klopp and the atmosphere that's there, the psychology of of winning this game, or you know, or say getting wins back to back against Chelsea uh, and Arsenal go a long way. It's still going to be a you know a fight. Manchester City are fully capable. Uh, they'll probably win their game. Obviously, it's a lot easier than uh, than Liverpool's. But I I really think that this is you know in their heads the the, the avalanche of momentum might, might just swell in a way that you know from that long goodbye is just going to be team that's possibly unstoppable. And we've seen Liverpool in different situations like that already. And with this club, I, a club situation, I think it can swell. I really, I, my gut feeling tells me that even though I have tons of respect for Manchester, uh, you know, Manchester City can turn, up, turn that around and, and who knows, maybe Arsenal will have a say in this as well. Rob, is this a bigger game for Arsenal knowing that if they lose, they're eight points behind Liverpool and City will have two games in hand because they play on Monday? Yeah, because I think if, if you offer Liverpool a draw right now, they take it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you go to the Emirates, you take your draw and you move on. Um, for Arsenal, I think it's obviously a bit more important that the, the onus is on them to win. If they don't win, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they are out of the title race. I think it's probably a bit earlier than that, um, early to say that. I also think that because there are so many good teams in the sort of the, you know, around the top half of the Premier League, the likes of Villa. Newcastle, Brighton, those kind of teams, they're going to take points off, off yeah. other teams. Um, you know, in the past, we've seen title winning teams, you need 100 or 90, 98, 99 points. I think that the points total this season will be less than that, which will benefit the likes of Arsenal and Liverpool. So I don't think it's, you know, dire consequences if Arsenal don't win this game, but certainly it's a bigger game for they are at home. The onus is on them to win. Liverpool would take a point right now. And, you know, Arsenal mm. really need to be on the front foot. Janish? Yeah, I mean, it's like, just as I was talking about psychology for Liverpool, Liverpool, think about Arsenal, what a blow that would be. I mean, ahead of the season, those players and Mikel Arteta and fans, probably neutral fans, would say, again, Arsenal and Manchester City. I don't think anybody, I mean anybody, but not many at Liverpool, uh, probably in the position that they're in right now and going from strength to strength, even though there's such negative news about Jurgen Klopp. But, you know, this rebuild is there and Arsenal would have felt that, OK, we've pushed hard last season. Maybe we're better for it because of the experience. 
we've been good from the beginning of the season again. Here's the push again. We've learned our lessons. And as you said, if Liverpool were to beat them there, eight points right there. So it's not just Manchester City, but now you're talking Liverpool with, with that difference. I think would have been I think that would have been a mass, final blow for Arsenal. I really do in terms of a, a title chase. Yanish, this is a question I never thought I'd be asking up until a couple of weeks ago. Connor Bradley up against Martinelli or Trent Alexander-Arnold? Who would you pick if you were Jurgen Klopp, given what Bradley did in midweek and looked fantastic? <laughs> he, he, I don't know if he's hoping, but he, you know, uh, if, if McAllister's not ready to go, maybe he puts Trent there and Connor Bradley plays anywhere. Yeah, it's it's a such a it's a, such a d- difficult decision because the kid, I mean, it's not you know a kid. I mean, he's... Look, I mean, he's Trent obviously still better going forward in terms of distribution, still much better and all that. But I think if you look at Bradley, he's probably better and more balanced on both sides of the ball, right? Uh, so defensively, he gives you a little bit more uh, security, I think, that, than Trent does. But it's hard to uh, keep Trent out of lineup in a big game. He did it against Chelsea. I think Jurgen Klopp always knew that Chelsea are going to be an easier opposition than Arsenal. So I tell you, I don't know what he would do. But I think I think he'll do the right thing, and I think Trent will understand it. If, say, Trent is not playing in the midfield because that midfield is, is as it was, I think as a manager, I would play Bradley in this one. He deserved it, and I think now Klopp feels probably, you know, knowing that he's leaving, he's probably saying, hey, who cares what anybody says? Everything I do is great now anyway. We've spoken about who's going to replace Jurgen Klopp. Um, Rob Dawson is for this specific decision mm. and he has to decide if Connor Bradley starts at right back or Trent Alexander-Arnold against Arsenal on Sunday so Trent I think that if, yeah. if it was me it would be Trent on the right I'd also consider chucking Andy Robertson back in on the left as well as Joe Gomez has done at left back I just think in these big games in those kind of really intense situations that experience counts for an awful lot mm. obviously a massive decision because you know, Andy Robertson's obviously not particularly fit, hasn't played an awful lot, um, but that would be my decision, which is probably why I'm not a manager. I, th- I think it's important you as well. Right. Bed, you've got to bed Andrew Robertson in because he's got a big summer coming up when he lifts the European Championships no. with Scotland. So you don't want to kind of, yeah, you don't want to make him too um, out of breath a little bit too early for that one. Let's get a prediction uh, for you two, not for the Euros, because that's already, we know what's going to happen in the summer with Scotland winning. But what about Arsenal against Liverpool? Yanis, you first. Two on to Liverpool. Okay. Wow, I, uh, I normally get a diatribe of an explanation afterwards. I'm shocked. Uh, Rob? I think Arsenal. Narrowly, 1-0. Mm, that would narrow the gap between Arsenal and Liverpool. Okay, thank you, Rob. We appreciate that. Have a good weekend. Where are you this weekend? Which matches are you taking? United, West Ham, Old Trafford on Sunday. Mm. Okay. Day off tomorrow, lazy boy? I mean, goodness me, it's not like you're... Travel day. I'm sure there's, I'm, I'm travel sure there's day. a game we can find. Stockport will be playing, Bolton maybe. There you go, a travel day. Listen to you. <laughs> Come you're on, do, supposed... a, do, do a travel day so you can expense it. Don't say you have a free day. <laughs> <laughs> don't, give, don't give all the clues. No comment. <laughs>